Hey, what's going on, you guys? Hope everyone's doing good out there. Everyone's staying safe and healthy. Welcome back to another episode on my channel, Prehistoric Companions. So a couple weeks ago, probably like two weeks ago, I dropped a video indicating that the animals and I were going to pack up shop and we were larging, uh, moving to a larger property and, you know, we made some serious progress with that, got everything move, moved and got the animals all situated. But let me tell you guys, things didn't go as planned. So I have a tendency to get like way too amped, way too pumped, and like I just get things done. I got high energy and I don't play. <laughs> I get, I, I just, I'm very productive and I get things done. So the property I was going to is beautiful, it's right by the river, it's like great location. It's actually not too far from where I work my day job, the post office, but uh, the thing is that it just didn't work out. It didn't work out. I was going to have a roommate. It was one of the other co-workers that I, you know, work with at the office. And she had a couple rooms and a big property where I could really, like, focus on, like, doing my art and more things with the animals and just feel less restricted. For some reason, yeah, up in these mountains, you know, it's just... The, all these places up here are pretty small, you know. I, I came from New Mexico, and in college I had a 2,400 square foot house, huge backyard, front yard, lots of parking space, and I totally took that for granted, because whenever I moved up here to Car uh, the Aspen area, the Roaring Fork Valley in Carbon, you know, Colorado, man, you get like a mere fraction of like what I'm used to. So it's been really, really difficult actually the past like three and a half, almost four years that I've been up here. And I'm always trying to improve my situation and especially with the new direction that I'm going and trying to build prehistoric companions. You know, more space is always a great thing because you know, tanks and environments and animals, they, they do take up a pretty good amount of space, especially the bearded dragons. And I wanted to upgrade them to 120 gallon tanks so we're going to postpone that project. Things just didn't work out with this uh, individual that I was going to room with. She and I are just, we're just totally not compatible in any way, shape, or form. And primarily more so, largely because I am very controlling. I like things a very specific way. I'm very clean, neat, and orderly. I try to be. And just things weren't going to work out with us, unfortunately. So... Uh, my book, my good friend David Bear, he is currently uh, still have to pack up things here and trying to make plans to uh, get another place situated, solidified. So my good buddy David Bear, he's taking care of me and the prehistoric companions. So we're going to roll over there in just a little bit and check everybody out. We're going to make sure the dragons aren't giving him too much trouble, the snakes and all that stuff. He's actually grown like really accustomed to them. He used to be one of those like I when I first introduced the bearded dragons to David, he's like, oh, get those away from me. He was actually pretty scared of them, but now he loves them. So he's trying to convince his wife <laughs> that they, his daughter has one bearded dragon, and he's trying to convince his wife now to obtain a second one. So good luck with that, buddy. I hope it happens for you. But. Uh, with all that being said, I think the best thing right now where I'm projecting my future plans is, is like I said, it's been pretty difficult living up here. You know, all my, all my family and friends are back in New Mexico, and the cost of living where I am currently is pretty gosh darn astronomical. It costs a lot to live here, but, I, you know, if you guys ever roll through the Roaring Fork Valley, I mean, you'd understand why. You get what you pay for. The, the scenery, the mountains, you know, you can pretty much walk outside and go skiing or snowboarding. It's pretty phenomenal. But I think the best thing for me to do at this point is try and put in a transfer to the post office and try and head back home because... You know, my mom's a loan officer, and she could hook me up with a really great loan on a house. Properties are just a lot. You get a lot more down there, more land, bigger spaces, and it's so much more affordable. So right now, that's definitely, 
in my favor to try and pursue something like that and be closer to people that are going to really help me with my endeavors. And, you know, I miss my family immensely, so I'd like to get back to them and just see where things go, you know. So, well, that being said, let's pack up things here. I'm almost done packing up all this place, just a couple little things here and there. And uh, we're going to go check on these animals. Okay, so it's been a couple days actually. I'm obviously wearing new clothes and whatever, all that, blah, blah. So we're over here at my buddy David Bear's hotel room. And he was so gracious to allow me to do this, set up a nice rack. Get at least the leopard gecko, the ball python, the boa, the milk snake. Uh, my isopods, my roaches, everyone's pretty comfortable for now. He keeps it pretty darn warm in here, so everyone's, you know, about 80, 79 degrees, so they're comfortable. And this is home sweet home for just a short while uh, until I get the new place solidified about mid-April, and then I'm going to be putting in the transfer back to New Mexico. And I really hope that that will go amazing, so I'll really be able to just really go nuts with everything, the visions and things, what I see myself doing in life, and the things that I want to accomplish. My, my dreams are just huge, I feel, and it's quite daunting thinking about it, because it's going to take a while, I think for me to accomplish all of that, but going back home to New Mexico and being surrounded by people that I love and people who love me who are going to support me is the absolute best thing that I could do for myself right now. So these guys are happy, I'm getting actually ready to feed them, I'm getting some uh, tasty delicious prey I'm thawed for them. Let me show you guys the dragons. Alright, so don't judge me. <laughs> this is totally temporary. These setups are not in any way, shape, or form ideal for bearded dragons. But give, giving my current situation, uh, it's just gonna have to do for at least two and a half weeks, three weeks maximum. But we let these guys run around, you know, they kind of do their own thing, not of course, because I don't, you know, don't let them run around together because I don't need babies right now. That'd be not good. We got Aussie and Philo in these 40 gallon tanks. I hook them up with, they both got cardboard box that allows them to get closer to their basking lights and also uh, cut a hole out so they can hide, use that as a hide, a little cave. They can retreat from the heat. They got some branches. The substrate I'm using for them is a mixture of cocoa husk and children's play sand, all natural children's play sand. So totally safe. The thing with that substrate, it's actually really ideal for them because it's 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 enrichment for them to what like dig a little bit and you know play around in the sand, so to speak. And uh, when you clump it up, it actually doesn't retain like a whole lot of humidity that with the sand mixture the cocoa husk does but it just makes for a more natural look. And if it does get wet, if you clump it up into a ball, it doesn't retain that form, that ball shape. It just kind of disintegrates and falls apart. And that same thing is gonna happen if your bearded dragon just so happens to ingest the, the substrate. You know, they, they lick around, kind of like snakes, they flicker their tongue. And the lizards, they do that too. They kind of like taste you know, periodically their environment to let them get more information about what they're experiencing. So sometimes, or even when they're eating bugs or just whatever, they, whatever they're doing, they sometimes just ingest like loose substrate, but this is totally perfect because 
like I said, if it clumps into a ball, like with calcium sand, that's why you don't want to use that stuff, calcium sand, because uh, if it got wet, it really retains its its form, its structure, and that that's what's going to happen inside your bearded dragon. That's what causes impaction, but this loose substrate, it just falls apart, and that same thing's going to happen inside the dragon, too. If it eats the substrate on accident, it's not going to retain its form, and the animal's going to be able to pass it through its system. So we got all their lights, you know, we, I spoil these guys rotten. I give them all kinds of roaches and hornworms and good tasty stuff. Uh, try to get them eating their greens. They've been getting better lately. Uh, the trick is just putting like the worms and things in with their salad so they accidentally eat their salad along with it. And if I have to, like while they're eating, you know, sometimes I'll grab like a piece of lettuce and like put it in their mouth and like, like a little choo-choo train, you know, just they'll keep chewing and chewing and I'll keep trying to feed the lettuce into them. So they, <laughs> they're so goofy. I love these guys immensely. The dragons, they're definitely what has ultimately inspired me so much. They're such amazing pets. And if you don't got one, you're living your life all wrong. You gotta get a bearded dragon, but do your research. Look for a good breeder and really see what's available out there. Don't just go run to PetSmart and Petco. I don't really necessarily condone that, and I'll have to make another video about that. But these guys are amazing. They're doing great. And uh, with that being said, how about we feed some snakes? I gotta feed Vegeta. I gotta feed Danger Noodle, Looney, and the Boa, uh, Linguini. So let's get those guys fed. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. It means the world to me, it really does. Like this is like, I, I genuinely want to just invest my time and energy into. I usually try to post videos on Fridays and Sundays, but with everything going on right now, it's been like crazy. And there are no excuses. I just need to learn how to commit more and yeah, it really just depends. Uh, I, I've had a lot on my plate, but this is, uh, you know, the YouTubing adventure, the working with animals and trying to connect with more people. People from all around the world or right here in my own country or my own state, my own town. You know, I just, I want to connect more and I want to share with people the, the things that I've learned and the, just how enlightened I've become and uh, just how awesome it is to work with like different reptiles and I want to work with so many more different species and continue learning and continue providing better and better and more content for you guys and it's for both of us you know I, I get so much out of it every time I post a new video because I'm learning new things along the way so I'm loving this hobby and I'm loving what everyone else is out there producing on YouTube and Instagram other social media platforms so all you guys you know you keep rocking and rolling too and you know we just need to feed off of each other and you know just every day is another day for learning and just keep putting more positivity out there so 
Uh, me and the animals, like I said, we greatly appreciate your guys' continued support. You guys do be safe out there. Wear your mask. Be great to your letter carrier. You know, we're working hard. <laughs> we try to. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys? Peace.